Hey what people, how you doing? Hope you're having a damn good day. Welcome back to the channel. And today we will be talking about something that has been requested by more than one person. Of course we are going to be doing the RB Leipzig set of tactics and instructions under um, Marco Rosa of course. Now it's taken some time because I've been wanting to do it properly guys. So you, you need to bear with me here when I'm saying I will be on it, I am on it. I'm not just sitting here not doing it, ignoring you guys. Of course you guys mean the world to me. So I, I have been working on this of course it's been for a little while actually so it's obviously not just going to be one formation one set of tactics it's two actually so we will be discussing the 4-2-3-1 the narrow version of it and we will also be discussing the back three system the i think it's a three four uh one two formation or however fifa likes to put it but essentially it is another set of tactics and formations and i was trying to get that right before i put out this content but you know what it is fantastic so we're just going to go through the team really fast we've got Openda, a new signing of course from lens i think in france um he is replacing um silver who recently left and went to i think it was real sociedad and um, then in behind we have um olmo we have Werner simmons of course another new signing on loan of course um, Schlager, Hidaria, Rom, Rom, I don't know how you pronounce it, um, Klosterman, Orban, um, Simikin, who I love, he is a fantastic right back slash centre back, and the reason he is playing in this is because of the back three, of course. Um, then we've got um, Gulasi, 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 there we go. And we've got Sesko, we've got Baumgartner, Forsberg, Seewald, um, I think you pronounce this Bryswich. Um, Henriks and then Bitsabishu, this dude, of course. Um, and then we've got Pulse on the bench, Campbell, um, Pavanga, of course, and then a few others that um, are not really noteworthy. I think um, in terms of depth and stuff, I think uh, RB Leipzig need to buy a few more players. Of course, they have reinvested into their team after losing some some big names, of course, mainly uh, Sabozla leaving. But yes, nonetheless, I think they've replaced some of those players with some really good ones right here. Um, so just having a look at the formation quickly. It is a 4-2-3-1 narrow. We've got a left and a right midfielder We've got obviously two DMs in this situation and two fullbacks not wingbacks um, So yes, there we go So with Marco Rosa's style of football, he likes to press when you lose position, which you will be doing a fair amount This is not very much a, a possession based brand of football that you will be playing. It's very fast, very counteractive um, very proactive off the ball and keeping your shape of course but at the same time, he does like to implement a press when you do lose position. And you can also help with that by using the D-pad, of course, um, using the team press, having them press up high. It does help a lot when you um, have, when the ball is out of play and you hit the restart, whether it's a throw-in or a goalkeeper kick or something like that. Um, just having that first nice big jolt of, of um, pace and power and athleticism that this team can exert on their opposition, of course, it does tend to help. As for the width, it is set to 25. It's a nice narrow formation, of course, um, and this just helps it um, stay compact as well. But at the same time, you want your the likes of Timo Werner staying quite close to the, the number 10 or even the striker because he will have a nice role that's slightly differing from the right-hand side where he will be more advanced at times and almost play like a secondary striker um, in certain moments, getting in behind the defense, making sure that he's pressing high up with Openda, of course, um, and that's more or less what you can get out of that. But also in saying that, you have players like Simikin who are more naturally built to be a centre-back, but they are playing as a right-back, and you'd want him to be a slightly more narrow, um, so he can't be as exposed, and you'll have the likes of Schlager or Hidaria helping out the fullbacks from time to time. Um, as for the depth, it's a nice high line. Of course, 75. You can have it slightly high if you want. We did speak about this with the Dortmund tactics, of course, where... In the Bundesliga, they do like to play quite high, expansive football, um, and just going along with that, uh, that does tend to, that does tend to set the trend for this set of tactics as well. With Marco Rosa's 75 overall depth for the team, it also helps keep the team, the opposition, I should say, compressed, compact in their own half, and it also helps with the pressing game that you will be trying to implement throughout the, the game, of course. As for the offensive build-up play, it's set to fast build-up and forward runs. Now, you do want to try and counter-attack your, your opposition as much as possible with this team. It does also create a very fluid-looking formation where you might see a 4-2 formation from time to time with 
Verna shifting up higher and almost shifting out wider, and that is more or less where this formation does come into play. Um, where we have seen um, the, the graphics from time to time where it's a 4 triple 2 formation, um, which does look quite nice, but in FIFA it's not the most practical formation going forward, whereas this is, and it does take that shape defensively of course as well, um, but you want to try and overload the opposition with as many bodies forward into the box, that's why forward runs is on, so you will see the likes of Schlager and Hidaria in certain moments bombing on forward, getting plays running on, of course you want your fullback Simikin and um, Ram also bombing on forward, um, so you want to try and overload the opposition, that's what I'm trying to say here. That's the, that's the key bit of information, you want to try and overload them, of course. The width is set to 80, which allows for a fast-paced movement, of course, and a very fluid, high-tempo style of football that you will be going forward with on the offensive end of things. Um, and it does work out quite well with the instructions that certain players do have with this team. Um, as for players in the box, like I mentioned earlier, you want to have players bombing on forward as many as possible. So we have it set to 9, which creates a high-risk, high-reward type of football and that's what you want to see especially with RB Leipzig who do play very exciting football. Um, as for corners and free kicks they are both set to four as per always. So as for the instructions for the goalkeeper he is set to come for crosses and become a sweeper keeper of course it makes sense with a very high line that you will be playing you do need your goalkeeper to be slightly more willing to run off of his line um, maybe get himself into a little bit of trouble from time to time but at the same time still be able to cover the very high line that you will be playing. No, no risk, no reward. Yeah, that, that's the, the brand of football that RB Leipzig like to play. Of course, he is also set to come for crosses at the same time. Now, because you will be playing with a very fast-paced team, fast-paced build-up, um, and they do look to play out from the back, like I mentioned earlier, press R1 and it will drop them further down. So you can look to play out to your centre-backs and to your full-backs, of course, and then maybe have a slightly slower build-up play for that phase of play. Um, as for your centre-backs moving forward, um, they are set to the base set of instructions, you don't really want to mess with them and we normally don't really mess with them unless it's more of a personality trait that we try and implement. Um, but then we get to a slight differentiation um, in terms of your fullbacks where Simikin is set to a balanced attack and overlap of course and then as well as stick to position so you don't want him like aggressively going into tackles and like potentially throwing himself out of position and also staying slightly higher because I've noticed when your fullbacks are um, set to um, step up they normally tend to be slightly higher and a bit more aggressive towards their opponents. So as for Simikin, he will look to overlap and create space for Simmons um, in certain moments, but it's mainly going to be, um, I nearly said Philip Rom. it's mainly going to be David Rom. I'm pretty sure his name's David. If it's not, we're going to call him Dave on the channel from now on. Um, but it's mainly going to be Rom that does bomb on forward and fly up and down the left-hand side, whereas Simikin will look to Obviously, be more involved in the builder play, but at the same time, he will also be a bit more cautious and from time to time create a back three. But speaking of Rom, he is said to join the attack, overlap, and of course, step up. Um, like I say, he, you want him to be your out there ball down that left hand side, and it also allows for Werner to sometimes invert a bit more um, and sometimes plays a secondary esque striker. Of course, you want him overlapping um, consistently, more or less playing as a left winger from time to time. Um, and of course step up like I said earlier, it does allow him just to stay slightly higher up the field which is quite nice, it does create a, a, a wing back-esque look to him which is quite nice at the same time. Um, and then we've got Schlager and Hidaria as the two DMs. Now Schlager will be more of your anchor man going forward or, or staying back and protecting the back four or the back three or even the back two from time to time depending on who bombs on forward and who doesn't. But he is said to cut passing lanes, stay back while attacking, aggressive interceptions, you want him to be as aggressive as possible. That is also a bit of a personality trait because he is very aggressive when going in for his tackles. Um, and then of course he's going to cover the center and then stick to position. So he's not going to really be a deep line playmaker or anything like that. He's literally going to be almost like a, a Sofia and Amrabat type player where he just sweeps up play, gets the ball going and passes it forward as much as possible and as quick as possible of course. So he is going to be the shield of the back two. Um, when Simikin and Rom bomb on forward. Now, as for his midfield partner, Hidaria, he is set to cut passing and stay back while attacking aggressive interceptions as well, cover center, and then drift wide. So when Rom does bomb on forward, he will look to more or less fit into that left back role and uh, making sure that there are no runners on the counter attack and he can pick up the wingers from time to time if Rom is out of position, of course. But he will have a bit more of a box-to-box -box role. I know it does say stay back while attacking, but he does tend to get forward a bit more um, and he's a bit more freer when it comes to the, the midfield defensive situations, um, which is quite nice nonetheless. Uh, moving slightly forward now to Olmo, he is set to come back on defense, get into the box and drift wide. 
um, and of course normal interceptions will be on. Now the reason why we have Drift Wide on is more or less to do with Timo Werner and it does allow Timo Werner to just advance himself a bit more but like I mentioned in the, the tactics section you do see from um, certain moments in the game where there's a 4-2-2-2 two, two, two formation that takes place and that is literally because the number the number 10 um, in Olmo he does tend to drift wide and push Werner up but it also allows for Simmons who is not a natural right winger or a left winger he is more of a number 10 as well but it also allows him to drift inside and have space to operate with as well um, which is quite nice so it's all about fluid movements and creating space for one another and to be honest I think out of the front four, all of them can play in each other's positions. So it's a win-win, all, all ends up and all round as well. Um, but speaking of Simmons, he is set to come back on defense, cut inside and have a balanced support um, in terms of supporting runs. And of course, he is set to make diagonal runs and get into the box. Um, and we've seen the gameplay above where he was fantastic. I think he, I ended up scoring a hat-trick with him. He was just really good with his, his movements with Olmo and his ability to cut inside and create overloads in the very wide areas for Simikin to operate with, but also for him to have a very central role in order for him to score those goals, um, obviously. And then as for Werner, he is set to come back on defense, cut inside, get in behind um, and get into the box. So he will also be making angled runs into the box, but at the same time, he will also try and help out the defense Rom, especially with him and his ability to bomb on forward. You will need a bit more defensive um, support on that left-hand side, which is why I have gone with Werner to be more of a comeback on defense. Now, if you do want to have that four triple two formation in place all the time, I would probably suggest you have him on stay forward because then it will allow him and Opender to more or less take up striker roles. Um, but for just a bit more defensive solidarity, I'd probably say have him on comeback on defense. Um, cut inside is self-explanatory with Ram bomb bombing on forward. You want him to cut inside onto his more dominant foot and get, get off shots. But more importantly, his ability to run in behind, play on the shoulder of the last man is fantastic um, and of course Timo Werner is quite pacey um, so it goes without saying getting behind is a key attribute for him um, so yes and then of course we have Appender's role he's here to drift wide get him behind as well normal interceptions will be on and then stay forward he will be the focal point going forward and the outlet of course but you want him to drift wide and create space for the likes of Olmo or Simmons or even Werner to drift into that key position that in that key area that he's leaving open and um, drawing center backs out of position for, for them to be more of a threat. And we did see with Simmons being able to score a hat-trick. And that was literally because of the movement that Arpenda had up front. Now, when Silva played last season, of course, he was an out-and-out number nine. He was a target man, ball into feet, and they played slightly different. With Arpenda, I've gone slightly rogue here with his set of tactics because this is more or less how he played at Lens, where he would ru run the channels, draw um, the centre-backs out, um, as well as making sure that he was a bit of a nuisance with the ball in behind. And of course, the, this team with the likes of Verne on the left wing and Openda up front with the sheer pace that they have, it will be keeping the opposition defense on their toes. So that is the first set of instructions. So as for the next phase of play or the next formation and the tactics, of course, we have got the 3-4-1-2 or the 3-5-2, however you want to put it. However, FIFA puts it, I don't really know. But more or less, this is the formation to go with. Um, basically what I've done is, if you just have a look here, um, obviously it's three centre backs. I've dropped the two wider centre backs down a little bit, making um, Auburn the, the more forward central um, central defender. And then of course we're playing with two central midfielders, not DMs of course, otherwise that's too defensive and then there's pace of players lost completely. But then mainly we are playing with left and right midfielders. So it's not wing backs, it's midfielders. One cam, of course, and then two strikers, being Werner and Openda. Now, what's nice about this formation, just going back here quickly, is we are able to adapt the original formation, the the three, two, the four, two, three, one, sorry, and we are able to adapt that quite naturally and seamlessly into this formation, which is quite nice. And that's something I've always noticed about RB Leipzig. They're very fluid with their formations, and with it doesn't matter who their coach is, whether it's um, Nagelsmann or Rosa or whoever they have always been able to just quickly adapt throughout the um, pace of the game and the course of the game I should say um, and just adapt into something else and to the opposition of course. So just having a look at the tactics it's slight differentiations between the original and obviously this one but basically it's still set to press after a loss of possession. The width is slightly wider this time to go along with the formation of course your out dead balls will be your two wide midfielders and of course your two strikers um, and of course, this team is very young and still has a lot of athleticism and 
um, stamina and everything so they can win the ball back um, at a fast rate and close down passing angles and passing lanes. Um, so you can have it slightly wide and still consistently keeping it super compact. As for the depth, it's still set to 75, a nice high line, but because you have so many attacking players in this formation, of course, you only have three defenders, um, essentially. So you will have more attacking players in the opposition's half, meaning that the press that you do implement, of course, with the, the D-pad and um, team press, that that press will be a bit more, I don't know, I, I want to say more aggressive because it will be because there's a lot more players in the opposition half. Um, so it does throw a nice little spanner into the works for the opposition to try and work with. As for the builder play, it's still set to a fast builder play and the chance creation is still set to forward runs. Um, as for the width, it's slightly lower this time because, it, like I said earlier, it is a naturally wider formation. But at the same time, you will be looking to work the ball into those wide areas. So Ram will have the ball a lot deeper and be able to drive with it more um, with the ball at his feet. And likewise for Hidaria. And that is why I went with Hidaria slightly... Oh, I went with Hidaria as the, the right wing back slash right midfielder because, one, it is a natural position for him. And two, I think he, has, he does a better defensive job than what Simmons would do or um, Olmo would do in that situation. Um, as for players in the box, slightly lower again because you do have a sheer huge amount of offensive players so you kind of want to like tone it down a little bit but you still have the offensive quality but it is set to 8 so one lower than the original um, set of tactics but it makes more sense because like I said you do have more um, offensive players in the opponent's half at all times. As for corners and free kicks nothing's really changed back to four. As for the instruction of the goalkeeper, of course, come for crosses and sweep the keeper, standard procedures. As for your back line, um, more or less the same, no real changes to their instructions. But now things get a bit dicey, a bit different um, with Aram's, uh, Aram and Hidaria. They, they do have the same set of instructions, of course, um, but it is a very nice set of instructions nonetheless. But and something I give to all my wingbacks, um, especially in FIFA 23, um, but they are both here to come back on defense, stay wide, get in behind. Of course, you want them to pull the opposition's defense out of position, stretch the, the, the defense, of course. Um, you want them on balanced crossing runs as well. So maybe from time to time, there'll be a, a back post run from, from one or the other, which does work out quite well. And then, of course, for Hidaria as well, there are, there, there are his instructions, um, I should say. Um, now, as for Schlager and Olmo, slightly differentiating roles. Olmo is more of a... a, a Deep line number 10, you could say, that gets forward bombs on forward where Schlager will look to protect the back line. Like I said in the first set of um, instructions, he is going to be the anchor and he will assume that role again in this um, formation as well. He, so he is here to stay back while attacking, stay on the edge of the box. Of course, he will look to sweep up the play there and he will be more aggressive with his interceptions as per always. Stick to position and then cover center. Um, you probably could have him covering the wing, so if Hidaria drifts um, slightly higher than normal, he could cover there, but cover the center does provide a nice shield for your back line. Um, as for his partner, he's said to get forward, balance on crossing runs, so he will look to, from time to time, um, make a run into the box, maybe a late run, of course, but we do have it set to eight, so there's more time to not that he will be either on the edge of the box or just inside the box making a late run. He's also set to aggressive interceptions, of course, stick to position and then cover the wing. So when Rom does bomb on, you will see Olmo somewhat drift um, slightly wider than normal. Um, as for Simmons, he is here to basic defensive support, get into the box, free roam, of course. He is going to be the, the chief creator of this team going forward with more license to do what he pleases um, in the offensive areas, of course, being a bit more attacking and not having as many constraints on him. Um, and of course, he is also said to have aggressive interceptions on. As for Arpenda and um, Werner, they have the same set of instructions. Both are set to drift wide, getting behind aggressive interceptions, and then of course, um, basic defensive support for Werner, whereas Arpenda is slight variation, he will be set to stay forward. He will still be your focal point where Timo Werner will more or less assume the secondary striker role. But basically, the, the drift wide and getting behind is to create havoc in the opposition's back line. Of course, you want to try and stretch them as much, as much as possible, open up spaces for Simmons and Olmo to work with, um, and also, like I say, just um, potentially take centre backs out of out of positions um, and and stretch the back line. But more importantly, the aggressive interceptions is because they will be leading the press from the front. You want them uh, more or less like hitting the the opposition's defence from the centre backs onwards, um, and and you want to try and create as much of a misery as possible for the opposition going forward. So yes, that is the set of instructions for RB Leipzig. I've done two formations, two set of tactics and everything. I hope you have enjoyed this video if you have. And if you are still here at this moment in time, please smash that like button if you haven't already. Subscribe if you are new. 
I do tactics videos like this all the time. I really do enjoy it. Subscribe, of course, if you are new to the channel. Um, and of course, until the next time, my dudes, I hope you have a damn great day. I'm out.